Where are you? There you are. everybody. Uh, Finny here from Finny's Homebrew Emporium and you were just sitting in a big ton of Cascade Fresh Hops. Look at these bad boys. Look at the size of those cones. Look at that one. It's huge. So today we're going to brew a fresh hop. Um, bad ale. Um, so we've got in the shop we've got um, Montreaker and with Cascade. So um, New Zealand you know, hops to the fore, uh, and in two weeks' time we've got Nelson coming, so I may wait for that and use the Nelson as a dry hop, and we'll just have one hot, sticky pale ale with a stroke IPA, because um, why not? We can! Um, so yeah, I know how they get the, these lovely size of these fucking cones. Oh. Fun times! Right. I've got to get all these packed up, ready for our customers, um, but in the meantime, I've got to get brewing as well, otherwise I'll miss out on all this lovely sticky hot resin. Oh, it's so good. Hands smell great, just from touching a, a few of them. Alright, enough baffling. See you in a moment. So, we are just about to start. So for those of you that have grown part of this, um, always best, once you've turned off your pump, obviously close your gate so you don't actually spray yourself um, have oops, the handle ready to go but what I generally do is have three to about three liters ready of my sparge water so when I lift up I can start sparging straight away so you don't want to let that grain bed sort of condense too much because it affects your lottery and, and efficiency um, but what we're going to do today as well once we lift the basket up we can do some first work hopping so um, Oh, it smells so good. So this is 100 grams of fresh um, cascade, and so that's going to go straight into the into the you know, into the kettle, um, which will give us hopefully a nice um, aromatic air uh, and taste, as well as adding a bit of bitterness and all the rest of it. So wet hops all the way through the process here. Now then, we are almost at the end of the boil. I've already added in my five minute hop drop, which was. Um, 400 grams of Cascade. Now we're going to go flame out and add in, if I get this out of the way, all these beauties in here. Oh, this is, if this was smell of vision, oh, all these beauties. Mm. So, in, they go. 500 grams of Mochuaca. Probably don't need the leaf. A little bit of that stalk. A little bit of that stalk. A bit of that stalk. But as for the rest of it, we might just get the thing. Push these down a bit. Holy crap. <laughs> Get them all nice and wet. Oh, it's like hop soup. Oh, hops with a bit more hops, please. Woo. Smells so good right now. Right, I'm going to get the top on, get the reset going, and then leave it for you know a good 20 minutes. Let them all soak and really get in. I might drop the temperature a wee bit so we don't get too many IBUs from it. Um, but yeah, wow, looking so freaking good. The beauty of green hops are they float. And so, using the green further, I've not had to really pair anything back. You can see there's a mess load in there. Um, oh, and we've got oh, probably a good 18 litres so far. Um, so hopefully it will continue as that you know, big mass slowly clamps itself around the, the outflow. Um, so I guess we'll talk grain bill. As you can see it was a wee bit darker, but it is just a straight um, IPA recipe. So it's got 
um, it's American Ale is most of it. Then there's, um, what, um, so it's 20, I went for 23 litre batch, but I'm pretty sure I only get 21 into here because the hops are going to take up so much. But it was um, 400 grams of Munich, 200 wheat, 200 gladiator, 180 sour grapes to drop that mash pH. And I added 30 grams of roasted barley just to change the um, colour slightly. Uh, on there's 100 grams of toffee malt. So there's not a lot of crystal. So whilst it may be a darker colour, it's not going to be sweet. Um, but it'll just give that impression. So at the moment, um, uh, it's probably going to be a little bit warm, probably 25. It's really hard to get it, get the temperature right down at the moment because of the groundwater temperatures are sitting around 20. But um, we've got a little bit further left to fill this up. And then we'll bung it straight in the fridge and um, just drop, you know, the, the fridge is set to, to 18. So that will bring it down as fast as it can. Um, and then um, I've only got half an hour left in the shop, so I'm going to have to pitch at whatever temperature really this gets to. Um, it'll be cranky in the morning. We're pitching two packs of 001 because um, I've still got loads of these to use up from the, the problems we had with the, the White Labs order. So these are the ones that are they've got a lot, a little bit warm uh, when they were shipped so I couldn't sell them and we've got a replacement order but now I've got 50 odd yeast to get through <laughs> so um, it's a laugh we do plenty of brew right I think that's about it um, should be able to show you it tomorrow on the nice crowns and I'll put the blog about it because it's going to go mental um, and then we'll carry on the beer just here this um, is my wife's beer that is uh, a British pale ale made with jester hops. So um, that's hopefully going to be kegged soon, uh, probably next week. Um, I've got a keg to clean, and then my keg and fridge at the moment's got a beer in uh, that we're going to use at the hop stock on the weekend, which is a uh, beer event that's held at the labor laboratory out in um, Lincoln. So hopefully we'll get some footage of that and we'll tag it on to the end of this. So um, if I don't see you. Uh, in the week. I'll see you next Wednesday. Take care.